गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन आई होप यू आर इन्जॉइंग द डे टू डे एंड आई अगेन वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस अमेजिंग इवेंट ओपन सोर्स समिट यूरोप यूरोप एट डब्लिन आईलैंड माई क्वेश्चन टू यू ऑल इज लाइक हाउ हैव यू गाइज प्रीवियसली वर्कड विद सर्टिफिकेट्स इन क्यूबनिटीज और हैव मैनुअली मैनेज सर्टिफिकेट्स इन क्यूबनिटीज एक हाउ मैनी ऑफ यू या आई कैन सी वेरी फ्यू ऑफ यू so today we have the session that uh, i'll be talking about uh, security with certificates in kubernetes so let's get started so uh, this is akshat and myself unnati so we are working as a member of technical staff at vmware and we have recently graduated from uh, srm institute of science and technology chennai india uh, we have done our bachelor's in computer science so uh, hello and welcome uh, we are the speakers for the session uh, let's start the fun session uh, so here we have the agenda for the to uh, agenda for today first we'll be covering about the certificates basics like how uh, what are certificates and how two parties use certificates to interact then we'll be covering uh, what is the need of certificates in kubernetes how uh, kubernetes manage certificates and stuff then we'll try to understand what is a uh, certificate authority how it signs them issues them that we'll try to understand and also uh, we'll I, i'll be explaining the workflow diagram uh, how the certificate signing process uh, takes place then we'll be covering the certificate generation how certificates are generated and then followed by the uh, certificate generation apis in kubernetes then comes the most exciting part that's the hands on demo uh, that we'll be doing and that comes the final then comes the final part that is the bootstrap uh, certificate bootstrap and rotation where we'll be learning how we can rotate our certificates when it is near expiry mm -hmm. so most of you will be knowing about what are certificates why do we use them but for some newbies out there we'll explain it again so certificates are none other than a way of authentication between client and the server take the client and the server authentication the client has to authenticate the server and the server has to authenticate the client so that both parties are contacting the right one so we can authenticate them so certificates enable authentication between different components in the kubernetes cluster also so in the previous slide we saw what are certificates in this slide we'll see what is the need for certificates in kubernetes so this is a kubernetes cluster this is the master node and this is the worker node so there are different components in a kubernetes cluster as it is a distributed system so there is api server scheduler controller manager etcd and the kubelet so the api server is the main point of contact between each and every component inside a cluster so it has to communicate to all the component so it needs a certificate or a validation that it is talking to the right component so we need certificates in a kubernetes cluster now cluster certificate authority certificates and signing them so certificate authority is a trusted party which ensures the authority for entire kubernetes cluster all these certificates are signed managed and rotated by the cluster certificate authority so take it as a like in this diagram we can see that at the top part is the certificate authority and these two are client and the server so cluster certificate authority will give certificates to both the client and the server so that they both can trust each other mm -hmm. they both can trust the third party which is certificate authority and it will issue the certificate to them so that they can validate each other uh now comes the workflow diagram we'll try to understand what is the uh, complete workflow how it works how certificate signing uh, takes place so we have a pair of keys that is the pu public key and the private key so using the public key and the uh, tokens and uh, the csr certificate signing request or uh, sorry the certificate is the identity info it goes to certificate authority through a csr csr stands for uh, certificate signing request and uh, uh, once the once the csr reaches to the certificate authority the uh, certificate authority uh, validates the certificate and also the token and after that it issues the certificate and the, uh, and also signs the certificate and this is the signed certificate that we have uh, received in the end uh, now uh, we have learned about certificates how certificates are generated um, how what is uh, certificate authority and stuff 
Now let's create our own certificate. How how you can create your own certificate? How I can generate my own certificate? So there are uh, to generate certificates. There are many tools, but there I have uh, written three open source tools. That is Easy RSA, Open SSL, and CF SSL. So these are the commands that we can run. You can also find these commands in the official documentation of Open SSL. Open SSL generate RSA followed by the output uh, name of the key file that is domain dot key. And then we can uh, request the CSR using the second command that is open SSL request uh, and uh, REQ and followed by the key that we have generated in the first uh, command followed by the output name that can be domain dot CSR. Uh, and also coming to the third command uh, after we have created the CSR and the key we'll be using it uh, to generate a certificate. So here is the third command that we'll be running that is open SSL x509. Uh, followed by the key and the CSR that we have created along with the days for how many days it should be valid and the certificate name that we want the output. So then we have to create a private key and a self-signed root certificate of the cluster certificate authority. So we need a certificate for a certificate authority also. So we have to run this command open SSL request and the number of days for which we want the certificate to be valid. Then we have we can see the certificate in plain text using this command open SSL in the form of text. Yeah. So we are writing text. This is the last command you can view the normal text format base64 decoded format. So yeah. Now certificate generation API in Kubernetes. Kubernetes also offers a certificate generation API, which is certificates.kh.io. This is the endpoint in which you have to hit it and then it will generate a certificate. So it provides a certificate which is signed by a certificate authority that we can control. So client creates a certificate request and then this certificate request is sent to the certificate, the Component. certificate generation API in Kubernetes. So it is stored in a pending state before it is approved. So then the cluster admin approves the request and then it is issued. Till that it is there in the pending state only. And after that, the certificate request, certificate signing request is approved and the certificate is generated. So in this diagram, we can see certificate creation and service to service communication. So the certificate authority is made by certificate signing request and the config file. Then the trusted device sends a certificate signing request and the certificate authority in turn sends the signed certificate and key to the trusted devices so that they both can communicate with each other using the certificate and the key. Okay, so now it's time for a, a quick demo that we'll be uh, doing and understanding how certificate works in a Kubernetes cluster. So we, here we have a Kubernetes cluster up and running uh, and this is a mini I am running this cluster in my local system that is a mini cube cluster and uh, in this mini cube cluster we can see there is a default uh, kubernetes service uh, that is running can you zoom it yes so here we can see there is a default kubernetes uh, service that is running in the mini cube local cluster and uh, like uh, once this is created now uh, you have a cluster up and running we'll go inside the directory and uh, create the required files for that yes so here uh, this command is used to create your csr uh, uh, so for creating your csr you need to specify the host the, uh, the first two are the internal dns of the pods that we have to define followed by the internal ips of the pod and we also have to give the key what algorithm it should use and the size. Uh, and you can see in the output the CSR is generated. After running this command, you will uh, get two files that is server key file along with the uh, server.csr file. So our CSR is uh, formed after this. We'll use these two and we'll approve first. Uh, so here, uh, f the CSR file is formed in the previous step. Now we, we need to apply it to our cluster, right? So we'll run the command kubectl apply and we can give the name uh, as per our 
preference. So I am giving it OSS submit dot default, and I am uh, passing it in base64 encoded format. So I can see the response that it is created. And when I do kubectl get CSR, uh, you can check that the uh, condition is in the pending state. So uh, the CSR is created and it is also transferred to the cluster. But uh, as she mentioned that when a CSR is created, it is in the pending state uh, until a Kubernetes admin uh, approves it. So I'll do describe CSR followed by the name. I can see here it is in the pending state. And these are all the details that we have uh, for our CSR. And also we have the signer name. Now a uh, cluster admin will approve it. So this the, we can run this command kubectl certificate approve followed by the CSR name. So we can see we got the output that our certificate is approved. CSR is approved. Yeah. Yeah, so we can see it, it was approved. Uh, now we have learned the CSR, how uh, all the things in our CSR work. Now let's create our custom certificate authority so that we can sign our own uh, certificates. Yeah, so in this, uh, we have our, we have given this the, the name here as the signer, and we can see that certificate authority files are created. Uh, these are the three files. This is the key and followed by the CSR for creating the uh, certificate authority. So this, these are created using this command. And we'll be using it to sign our own certificates. Yeah, so and also for creating a... Uh, cluster authority, we also have to give a config file. So this is the config. We are uh, giving the permissions or the usage what uh, cluster uh, certificate authority can do, followed by the expiry how, for what time the certificate authority should be valid for. So we need to pass the CSR along with this config. Yeah, so here we have these three files all along with the config, yeah. When, uh, now I am running it, uh, kubectl guest csr, this is approved, we saw in the previous step. Now let's uh, sign that using the uh, certificate authority that we have created. Yeah, we have to give the name here, using this command, we can sign. Uh, so we can get signed certificate with serial number, this. So our certificate is signed. Now let's check again the status, kubectl get csr. Okay, yeah. We have to also give the name. Yeah, and when I send uh, a signed certificate to the um, API server, I, uh, it is I I receive this JSON response. So this is the JSON response which is received after sending the request and the certificate to the API server. Okay, so I am when now you can see like I have sent the certificate to the API server and I, I can see that it is issued now. It is approved as well as issued. And we can also view the details and here I'll be showing you the, yeah. So this is the certificate that we have received. This is the contents, actual contents of the certificate that we have. This, But this is in the base64 uh, encoded format. So let's decode it and see in the plain text. Uh, we can uh, simply uh, add this here in the command. And yeah, so this is the certificate in plain text format. This is the plain text format. Uh, these, these are the contents of our certificate that is downloaded. Like we can download this certificate, use it uh, uh, in the Kubernetes cluster anywhere. Yeah, go ahead. Now, once the uh, uh, certificate is issued, it is signed by the cluster administrator, it's done, right? Now, how to use it, how, how I can consume it, the things are done but consume how I can consume the certificate. So for that, I am creating a certificate here. So kubectl create certificate followed by the certificate server.crt that we have created. This is a signed and the approved one and also the key that we have to pass. So here we can see the output, uh, the secret is created and we can also verify that using kubectl get secret, the, we have a server uh, secret uplisted there. Yeah. So now let's use this secret inside a pod. So for that, I am uh, running this command. You can create a config map and use this. Take forward. Yes. Yeah. 
yeah so let's come back to the slides Uh, so yeah, a quick recap of the demo that we did. Uh, so here we uh, talked about how you have created certificate pair using the CFSL tool, uh, the two files that we got along with, uh, we saw that how you can approve the CSR, uh, how you can create your custom uh, certificate authority. We, show, we saw how we can sign them, uploading to API object the response that we got and also you can download and use it in secret and the port. So this was the demo that we saw. Now let's uh, cover certificate bootstrap and notation. So certificate bootstrapping is nothing but uh, when a client creates a CSR, it is associated with a token as well. So uh, the token and the CSR goes together for validation, like wh whether the CSR is uh, like it is received from a correct source or not. So to 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 validate that, validate that we have we also pass a token, and the CSR approving controller which is there, it validates the CSR and also uh, it validates and then uh, process it. So uh, the after the certificate is generated, we have seen that we can download the certificate. Now coming up next is the certificate rotation steps that we have. Uh, certificate rotation is nothing but when your certificate is coming near expiration, when it is going to get expired. So it is known as a certificate rotation. So uh, by default, the certificates are generated for one year so that like we don't have to uh, renew it again and again. So, but we can also keep, uh, keep it as per our wish. So like uh, when you want to, if you are using kubeadm, then uh, you don't have to manage certificate, it will rotate automatically for you. But uh, if you are not, then you have to manually do it in the cluster. So uh, using this uh, certificate rotation technique, we can we have to uh, rotate our certificates. So once the new certificate is available, then we can use it uh, to authenticate the connections uh, in a cluster. So to make the process automated, we are using a kubelet to make the certificate rotation automatically. So we can run this parameter rotate certificate which will control that the kubelet will automatically, automatically renew the certificate when it is nearer to the expiration date. So we can also write the certificate signing duration so that we can specify for how long the certificate are to be generated or to be issued for. Uh, so yeah, like uh, that's it for today. And do you have any questions for us? Uh, you can uh, reach out to us and connect on LinkedIn and Twitter. If you have any questions, do reach out to us. And uh, if you have any questions, please do let us know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.